Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave and in this video we'll be covering the session and arrangement views in Ableton Live, which is the single most important concept for this DAW and also it's the one that people get most confused with. So what we have here is we have session view and we know that we have arrangement view here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you this session view that I've just quickly put together. So if you want to have a listen. Okay, so we now have the rough building blocks of our track here in session view and um, what we need to do once we've played around, experimented and listened to how the tracks and clips interact with each other, uh, jam out a few ideas, we then need to eventually get those ideas into arrangement view. So what you can notice about session and arrangement view is that the arrangement view for a start is on the time domain. So what this means is in arrangement view we're actually plotting it along the length of a timeline as if we were in any other DAW and when we're preparing it for export. A few other things with session and arrangement view is there's some parts that are uh, going to share both of the views. So I like to think of these two views as being completely separate from one another. So what's going on in here could be completely different to what's going on here in session view. So we could have all different clips, the clips could have different notes in, we could have different automation on these and it could be completely different to what's going on in session view. The only things that these share are the devices, so each track and its devices, whatever view you're in, it's always going to be the same. You can change what's going on down here with the clips, but fundamentally the track and the devices are always the same, whichever view you're in. They're just viewed slightly differently here on the side. So we've got all the tracks, we've got all of our devices, we've also got our sends and returns. What is different though, is that we can choose to show or hide stuff in these views and we can set this on a per view basis. So if I want lots of space in session view, I can hide all of these. If I go to arrangement view, I can show all of them. And as I jump back and forth, you can see it keeps my settings and that goes the same for detail view here as well. If I hide it here, I can open up session view and display it. And as I jump between the two, you can see one's hidden and one's displayed. So another thing we can also do is if we highlight all the tracks and we can make these smaller. So now I've got a really tight arrangement. And if I go back to session view, it once again, it keeps the settings, so we're not, we haven't got this really bunched up now. It's nicely spread out. So we've got the arrangement record button here, and we've got the session record button here. So if I want to record anything into this session, then I can use, let's get rid of the inputs outputs, then I can use this session record button, and using the arm tracks down here, I can record something in, and it's not going to end up here. But if I want to get it here, I've got to use the arrangement record. So there's loads of different ways of getting something from here to there. We could, for example, just click on the actual track and then we could move it across like this and drop it. And you see there it is. And we could do this for multiple tracks. I'm going to use the tab shortcut. And we could actually do this for tracks going this way as well. So we could do it for scenes. And you can see we can place this on the scene here. 
And you've got to be careful because it will actually let you place it wherever you want, provided it's in the right track type. So I could put it there as well. So make sure you're putting your clips in the right tracks. Or else you're going to have kick drum MIDI firing off your bass and things like that, which isn't going to sound right. But what I think is the best way of getting stuff from this view into that view is simply to record it in. So to do this, what we can do is we can arm our arrangement record. And then when we're ready, we can either fire away. And this is now recording and playing. And if we look across, you can see that's recording there. But what I think is a better way of doing it is if we actually use the shift button, this is now ready to go. I can move around my project. I can make sure everything's right. Got the tempo. If we've got a singer or something like that and they, want to, they don't want to record into session view, they want to go straight into the arrangement, then everyone can get ready. And then all we have to do is hit the scene record. So let's do that now. Okay, so we've just recorded this in and we can see we now have this in arrangement view. And you notice how what I just did there is I just clicked this button that was here and now this is all lit up. And the reason that happened is because we've got this content here. This is what I've just recorded in, nice and neat. But this view, like I said, is different to session view. So if I play some clips and this is just going to carry on repeating for eternity so I'll put it on something that's a bit easier to hear me talking over so we've just got the kick and the drums if I now go across into arrangement view it's just looping around it will carry on going if I keep the loop going and you can see it's not actually playing what's going on in this view and Ableton's detected there's a difference between session view and arrangement view and going back to what we said earlier about only being able to play one clip per track here I'm trying to play this clip and here I'm trying to play these clips here so it needs to make a decision what one to play and it decides to go with session view because I've been pressing buttons in session view trying out new ideas so it's going to go with what I decide to do but if I then decide right I've, I'm testing out a few different uh, alternate versions of what I'm doing of my different tracks and clips uh, what I want to do is I want to revert back to what I had originally, which is what I've recorded in here, then I can either do that for the entire arrangement, which is going to make it play exactly what you see in front of you here, or I can do that on a per track basis. So if I do it for the kick, when we get to this section here, it's going to revert back to the kick that you see in front of you. And we can do that for all of our parts, one by one. Or we can just press this button here. And then we get exactly what's going on in front of us. So just remember, if you're in session view, and this could work the other way around as well. So if we have, uh, let's say we have this playing, and I'm in session view, and I'm firing off some clips, and I'm like, hold on a minute. These buttons have been pressed, these are playing, but why have I got these clips here playing? This, this track shouldn't be on, this track shouldn't be on, and this track shouldn't be on. Well, now we know it's because of arrangement view. So all we have to do to stop that, if we want to be in session view, is we just hit stop all clips. And that now stops all of our clips playing in session view. But you can see the top transport still has the play button turned on and if we go into arrangement view you can see the arrangement is still playing so that we then need to press stop on the main transport as well which is going to stop the playback of the arrangement and now we can play our clips so we now have session view playing and then if we go into arrangement view we can now click the back to arrangement button so going back to my point about session and arrangement view being different I can go and edit a clip. So let's say we uh, decide to transpose 
this a few octaves up. This now sounds completely different. If I decide that I want to work into session view, maybe I'm building a live set uh, to perform live in session view, then I need to make sure that I take this back into live and place it somewhere in here. And you can see this is now my edited version. So it's always good to make sure you label things properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything here because we've got our arrangement here. But what do we do if we want to get this arrangement back into session view? This is where we have a bit of a problem. So there's actually a very easy way of doing this. And all we have to do is use our loop brace. But obviously, we could do it manually just by picking these up, taking them over. And we could do that for larger ones like this. But what I think is easier is if we just find the part we want. So say we're going to do it for this section here. I can just right click and consolidate time to new scene. And you can see this isn't going to let me because we're limited to eight scenes. So what I need to do to fix this is just delete all of these. Okay, so we're now on the first scene. I can right click, consolidate time to new scene. And now if we go across, there we go, we've got our first scene. It's actually gone into the second, second scene, but you can see where I'm going with this. So we've got our first scene. We can go to the next one and we can consolidate time to new scene. And what's important to understand here as well is that I don't have to do this for the selected uh, loop brace amount. I don't have to do it because this clip is this size. If I wanted to turn this into one single scene, all I've got to do is consolidate time to new scene. And now if we go and look at this, we can see that we've got this part here where I've copied it across. You can see we've got these bars missing. And the reason that is, is because we've copied this here. So we've got one, two, three, four, the missing bars, and then the next bit. So this means we can pull entire parts of our arrangement into session view as a new scene. And if we have a look, this also works for audio as well. So I hope that's helped you understand session and arrangement view, and I'll see you in the next video.